Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces today. Bullish news. First up, Bitcoin addresses holding 1 million goes parabolic as 10% of Bitcoin supply sits idle for 10 years. And this is going to prove my theory that there is way less Bitcoin circulating than was previously thought. Also, billionaire Mark Cuban affirms that Bitcoin is a store of value after he called it anything but. And finally, we were so close to a stimulus package being put through by U.S. Congress, but of course, there is a little bit of a flub and somebody is holding out, but the reason they're doing it is actually a pretty good reason. And we'll get into all that and the 12 days of Christmas as well as the market, but I have to make mention of one important factor. There's been a lot of questions about the DNews Cardano staking pool, which as of right now, December 19th at 4 p.m., we're looking at about 10 and a half million ADA, which has been delegated to the DNU stake pool. A lot of questions have been revolving around how do I buy Cardano? I live in the United States. I live in a state that doesn't allow that. I'm only stuck with Coinbase or wherever else it is. I want to re recommend to use Simple Swap. If you go to my free website at danteachescrypto.com, in module five, there's a simple, easy video where I show you exactly how to use Simple Swap. But if you're looking for anything like, oh, I don't know, Cardano, it's right there. Also looking for Theta, it's also right there. Or T Fuel or some, whatever else it is. It's all right here. So this is a decentralized exchange. This is something that I highly recommend. I use it myself to buy Theta. Also to find Simple Swap is very easy in the link in my description of every one of my videos. There is to the exchange and wallet fees. If you just swipe over a little bit, here is Simple Swap and here is the official link which you can click right there and go right to Simple Swap so you know you won't get scammed. Now on to the 12 days of Christmas. So we've been doing pretty good with uh, giving away all these great items. And today, the 19th, we're giving away three free sessions or three free memberships to CryptoTrader.tax. If you don't know what CryptoTrader.tax is, it is the exact same reporting software that I use for my taxes here in the United States. So unfortunately, this will be only for the US viewers. And we are giving away free of the unlimited level access to CryptoTrader.tax for $2.99. And we're actually giving away three of these tonight. So to win, it's very simple. In the description below, it'll be the very first link. It'll go to danteachescrypto.com forward slash taxes. Put in your first name, email, and submit. And this is going to go directly to the team at CryptoTrader.tax. And they are going to find out three winners. And they're going to email those winners so they can get access to the software. So good luck to everybody. Go ahead and submit your first name and email. And they will take care of everything. All right, so let's take a look at the market. So today was a pretty good day for Bitcoin. It actually went to 24.1, almost 24.2. And it's actually tumbled down about $700. But it's still up 2.1 and 25% for the week. Those are amazing numbers. We like those numbers. Ethereum up to around 650. Pretty great. We'll take that 14% for the week. XRP, watch out. 57 cents down a little bit, but still up 13.5% for the week. So we'll take it. Tether's tether. Nobody cares. Litecoin, 10% uh, at $120 almost. Litecoin has been on a tear. Thankfully for that PayPal listing, it's really had a resurgence. Whatever PayPal li lists from now on will essentially be the Coinbase effect. The next cryptocurrency asset that they list will be enormous on PayPal. Hopefully it's Cardano, who knows. Uh, Chainlink at 1330, up 10% for the week. Cardano at 16 cents, anything really great? Eh, not too much, just a little bit here and there. Now let's take a look at what it could be if you would just invest in Bitcoin. We'll take a look at what Bitcoin is. So what we're looking at here is if you were invested into uh, Ethereum, you'd actually be down about 2% instead of investing in a Bitcoin. XRP, same thing, Tether, whatever. Litecoin, you've been up massively, 7.4%. And again, that PayPal listing was huge. Uh, 2.6 for Binance Coin, and really that's 3.3 eh, for Huobi, Ugh, whatever. Uniswap, hey, 3.5, I can see that. Uh, especially after what we talked about today. In the earlier video today, we talked about how Steve Mnuchin is they're putting forth regulation to control the custody type wallets that are on exchanges. It's gonna be a lot more KYC and AML type of uh, regulation. This doesn't really ha affect the private wallets such as uh, the ones that you have with Anna Ledger. But again, Big Brother dipping into what you are doing. So I, have made a proposal that I think that decentralized exchanges will be much more in demand as opposed to using an exchange and paying all the fees that they do. Unfortunately, DEXs have uh, pretty, <laughs> they still have fees too. All right, so that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump into today's top stories. First up, this is what I've been saying all along. We talk about the 18 and a half million Bitcoin that is circulating, 
But that's not true. There's actually been many millions that have been lost because in the beginning when people actually mined Bitcoin, they were getting like 50 Bitcoins every 10 minutes. And it was just like, you know, nobody's money was just, you know, a couple of cents here. And it didn't really matter. So people would throw away their hard drives or they would lose it or they would just break because I mean, 10 years ago, the computers 10 years ago were sucked. So when for like for me for like a pc I'd, I'd have a pc for like a year and i just throw it away because it's just worthless so i believe that there are millions that are lost and the circulating supply is actually around not 18 and a half million i think it's between two and three million personally maybe even four million so i think that would even raise the price up right now because circulating supply would be we'd be a lot lower and this report proves it so Bitcoin addresses holding on 1 million goes parabolic. 10% of Bitcoin supply sits idle for a decade. All right. So the time of publication, Bitcoin is hovering just below 23. So this was obviously a little bit earlier because now it's at 23.5, just about. And then researchers from Glassnode tweeted the number of Bitcoin addresses holding at least 1 million and said the metric has gone parabolic. That's what they say. These wallets that have a, a, a million or more increased 150% to 66,540 addresses. Why? Because Bitcoin Cross 20,000 has turned all those early minor addresses, which had 15 black rewards, into millionaire addresses. So can you imagine back in those days when you were mining Bitcoin, no one would have thought it would have gone to a dollar. First of all, they never thought it would be on par with a dollar. That went to a hundred bucks, that was crazy. And a thousand, that's ridiculous. And as soon as a thousand hit, People start 10,000? No way. 20,000? No way. 100,000? No way. 500,000? No way. So you see where I'm going here? This is the same thing that's happening. And it's, just, it's, it's happening in perpetuity. It's a perpetual motion of people just not believing it can actually happen. And then it happens. It's crazy. So at current exchange rates, a person needs close to only 44 Bitcoin to be a millionaire, which doesn't seem like that much, especially if uh, you would have bought, you know, back in March, it was like 5,000. I mean, look, you could have got... I mean, 10 for 50,000. Imagine 10 Bitcoin for 50,000. I mean, that just sounds crazy right now, but it really is. So here's the big crux of it. The data indicates that 10% or almost 2 million Bitcoin out of the 18 and a half million in circulation hasn't moved in over a decade. So what does that mean? Either you have the strongest hands on the planet where they're not moving anything at all, or they are lost. They are gone. They are thrown away. They are not coming back. And those numbers should be taken out of circulation, which would cause us to say, well, what we really have, instead of 21 million, it's really only 19 million. And that is the total max supply of Bitcoin because we can't get the other ones back. And also, let me move down here. These wallet addresses, these weren't like they were mined, they were minted, and they were transferred somewhere and somewhere and somewhere. These 1.78 million Bitcoin have never left their minor addresses. These are fresh wallets where when they were mined, they were just putting these addresses and that was it. They haven't moved at all. So that is almost 10% of the circulating Bitcoin supply. The analysis shows that 98% of those coins were mined more than seven years ago, 94% more than 10 years ago. That is a lot. And it says most could be, it's not could be. I mean, most are lost forever. And this was, I thought was pretty interesting. There's only one Bitcoin address in existence today with between 100,000 to 1 million coins, and the address has 141,000 Bitcoin, worth over 3 billion using today's exchange rates. If that's not Satoshi's address or wallet, I don't know which one it is, but that is amazing to me that one address has that many, but it is what it is. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. So next up, billionaire Mark Cuban, who has been kind of wishy-washy on Bitcoin, now says, yep, yeah, uh, Bitcoin's a store of value. And it's amazing how all these experts come out and they're like, yeah, it's store of value. Yeah, it's going up. Yeah, we're buying a ton of it. And all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, yeah, it is store of value. It's amazing. So yeah, here we are with the same type of story. Billionaire entrepreneur Mark Cuban, who has long been a prominent crypto critic, says he believes Bitcoin can store wealth. That's amazing. The odds favor, this is what he states, the odds favor those trying to approve upon it. It currently works as store of value with demand outstripping supply, so people are interested. Thanks, Mark. Didn't know that. So yeah, that makes sense, right? I mean, PayPal, they're gobbling up at least 70% of the total new Bitcoin, and then Grayscale is getting the rest. And then, of course, you have MicroStrategies buying up as much as they possibly can. Then you just had Guggenheim said they're buying up a ton. Um, they, they were buying at 10,000. That's the one that said that's going to go to 400,000. So... And that's just the ones that are public. 
for every one public company that says, yeah, we're buying Bitcoin, I believe there's 10 or 20 in the background, in the shadows, in the secrecy of darkness, who are buying up Bitcoin like nobody's business. And that is what is going to drive up the price. And then Mark says something like, uh, no matter how much Bitcoin fans want to pretend that's a hedge against doomsday scenario, it's not. Countries will take steps to protect their currencies and their ability to tax. So the more people believe this is anything more than a store of value, the more risk of government intervention they face. Well, here's the question to Mark. How are they going to do that? How are you going to do that? How are you going to ban Bitcoin when you'd have to ban the entire internet? There are over 10,000 nodes throughout the entire planet that hold Bitcoin. People say, ah, well, they'll just, they'll just ban the exchanges. Sure, go right ahead, America. Ban the exchanges and fall flat again. Because guess who's not going to? Every other single country out there, they're like, oh, you don't want to do it? Well, no problem, because we'll do it. We'll take over this. This is no problem for us. And we'll get around these sanctions. And we'll have our own little global currency, or at least a global store of value. So America... Have fun. We will leave you in the dust and you will be old school just like what you're doing right now with all the rest of your junk banks. And the reason I get a little bit passionate about it is I think it's irresponsible sometimes for, for someone to say, you know, you really, because it kind of gives a, a negative spin on it and people get a little scared and they don't invest into it. And then people invest in, you know, goofy things like bonds and putting their money in the bank and they 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 put it in savings. They think that's what, you know, it's what their mom and dad said. That's what their grandparents said. And it's going to be safe and that's okay. And then they put into assets that are, you know, they're they're prone to inflation or they just put into cash. And then when they have cash, what happens to that? It's on fire. So this is a problem. And Bitcoin and a lot of di different digital assets, they appreciate. We've seen it time and time again. 2021, we're going to see a massive amount of appreciation in this market. So when we hear these types of things, I feel sorry for the people that, you know, they, they it sounds good to them at first. Mark's like, oh, it's sort of value. And he's like, bad, but, you know, governments might ban it. And they're like, oh, I'm staying away from that. And they won't buy. And then when everything comes about and the world really does become a fire, they, they just miss the boat. This is why I created the channel. This is why I keep my website free. This is why I do the things I do every single day. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, oh, politics. Everybody loves that. There's two things you shouldn't talk about to save friends, religion and politics. And I will do one of those right now. Politics, live update, COVID relief, negotiations stall, the GOP senators call to end emergency Fed powers. And first, when I first read this, I'm like, God, leave these, these damn corrupt politicians. And then I get to why he's doing it. I'm like, well, oh, okay, I can kind of see that. So let's just scroll down. Now, hopefully this goes through. And I have to tell you, I gotta tell you that uh, these are the weakest bunch of congressmen and congresswomen out there. If they can't get anything passed, uh, they are inept. Because can you imagine their huge corporate sponsors who needed a bunch of money? And they said, "Hey, we, you, you, you got to pass them. You got to give us something." And they were able to do that, and in in perpetualness. Now, when you're trying to deal with the American people, and they're like, hey, we really need a stimulus, and we don't have anything to really live on. I mean, the last two minutes check was what, 1200 bucks? How long ago was that? Was that May? I can't remember. It's been a long time. And of course, there is unemployment, but they actually slashed the cost of that because they couldn't fund them because they couldn't get a stimulus bill fast. So here we are, uh, almost said in Christmas, and they're still fighting over the same things. And it's not going to be 1200 bucks. It's going to be like 600 bucks, if that. We'll see what happens. So it's uh, discerning to me that I see these types of things happen. I'm sure they're trying the best. I'm sure they're doing the, you know, the greatest thing of all time. But uh, you know, they have to keep pushing things forward, and they ha and they have to actually keep funding the government so they can stay open, so they can get this thing done. Here's what I say: I say nobody gets a paycheck in Congress until you pass this stimulus check or the stimulus package. Nobody gets a paycheck. You're going to work for free, just like everybody else out there. So I'm sure at that point, things get done. So one of the things that is, is one of the holdups is that as the hours tick down towards another government shutdown, senators deadlocked over Republicans' insistence on a provision ending certain emergency Fed Reserve powers being included in the bill. Again, what they're trying to do is to reduce the amount of power that the uh, Federal Reserve has, which could be quantitative easing, which they said, hey, you did a great job. You bailed us out, but you know you can't keep printing money like that. That's totally fiscally irresponsible. And this is just like one, one guy, it's Senator Pat Toomey from Pennsylvania, a Republican, and they're like, no, we're going to push this through. But he's stay, staying fast. The reason I bring this up is because the last time we had a stimulus package, there was a spike, a huge spike in Coinbase in how much money they got 
as far as the specific amount and the package itself was $1,200 for each American citizen. I mean, depending on where you got it, right? And they saw a huge spike in the amount of cryptocurrencies that were bought for $1,200. And uh, the same thing's going to happen here. As soon as this gets passed, a lot of people are that are doing okay are going to put that money and write into cryptocurrencies. Now, the ones that need it, they got to buy, I mean, you got to buy groceries. You got to put food on the table for your family, right? But the ones that are like, you know, I'm doing okay, they will put that into cryptocurrencies, which will increase the market cap and, uh, you know, bring, bring the whole prices up. So I'm hopeful this will happen, but with the way that things are going, I just don't see it uh, getting passed anytime soon. So that's it. So just remember, if you want to win the CryptoTrader.tax, we're going to give away uh, three of the unlimited plans. That's one I go, go for, but believe me. Um, in the description, you're going to see there's a video, actually, I talk about uh, CryptoTrader.tax. It's fantastic. It saved me a ton of time, a ton of headache, a ton of heartache, and uh, it's great. So uh, just go to danteachescrypto.com forward slash taxes. Again, the link will be in the very first part in the description below. Put in your first name and email and then send it over and then you can win. Now, now remember, this is only for uh, you to sue us citizens. I mean, for the most part, this is uh, what it really does. But I've got some good news for non-US citizens, and that is... 12 days of Christmas over by SwiftX, the Australian crypto exchange. And they've got some pretty great uh, gifts. Uh, culminating on the 25th, they're giving away one Bitcoin. And anybody can register throughout the whole planet. And you don't even have to be a SwiftX buyer. I'm going to leave the link in the description. You're just going to click on the enter giveaway. And uh, you'll do a multitude of things. And they pick up multiple winners. So uh, go ahead and check that out. And that is for everybody. All right. So thanks for sticking with me to the very end. I really appreciate it. A lot of good, interesting stuff going on. If you like these types of videos, there'll be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. Let YouTube do uh, their magic. And uh, that's all. So thanks again. Really appreciate it. See you on the next one.